Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Yeah, hi mom. Hello. You're welcome <laughs> to the channel. Thank you very much. I hope you are excited to be here today. Very, very. <laughs> very excited. So, um, what exactly did life feel like for you while we were waiting to conceive? Because I don't think I like to use that word, infertility. I remember when I received my diagnosis the last time um, with the hospital that I was going through here and you know they wrote diagnosis or was it disease disease or something I think it was disease on the on the letter they wrote disease that was the one I was using to go for IVF disease and they wrote inf infertility unexplained infertility and I looked at it and I was like unexplained infertility like what exactly is this like oh my god all of a sudden I have this thing tagged to my name you know it just felt very awkward but um yeah i just like poly waiting to conceive and what exactly was life like for you when you had to, to go through this journey with us also because i believe that you are also waiting to have your grandchildren at the time of course i was waiting but i felt i felt very bad actually that my children are in a far away land going through this experience on their own like you were saying, you just received that report and uh, had that kind of uh, verdict, which is uh, not God's own verdict. And so it was very, very painful, especially when I think you had that surgery in uh, 2019. Good. And uh, I just, I was trying to say, okay, why don't you forget? Why don't you stop it? Okay, come back to Nigeria. I didn't know what to do. I was distraught. But along the line, it was done because you couldn't bear the pain and all that kind of thing. Yeah, I remember we used to talk about fibroids, then I'd be like, I, I don't have fibroids. I've never had fibroids. I don't know what fibroids is. I don't know what it is. In fact, I never experienced it. I don't know why. But we, that was where we were, and we were waiting. And having gone through that... Uh, the surgery and then the we now waiting again. It was like, okay. Having gone through that surgery, I was I was discouraged. Because I wasn't sure that after surgery, it could happen. But I've come to learn that people do have their children after the surgery. And so that was where we were in my home. We kept praying about the situation. When I got discouraged... One year went past after surgery, after nothing had happened. After a year and all that, I would go to my husband. He wasn't, he wasn't, he would tell me, God will do it at his own time. And I would say, oh, but this man, is he not bothered about, he's not bothered the way, I uh, should pray more about this thing. The spiritual problem that we're having. Is there anything I don't know? Maybe somebody has, not prayed about. somebody has cooked soup for us somewhere that we have eaten. Okay, and so <laughs> we kept at it. And then my friend, who is a, a pastor, we were also praying together. She, every morning, she, up to today, she gives me scriptures, you know, and I use it to pray every morning. And so what that did for me was to build up my faith in the word of God. And so when having read it, I will just forget about it, knowing that. Because God has written it, none shall be barren in my land, in my own ground. He said I should tend this garden of Eden. He has put me into, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And so that's where I was. Okay, so I remember, the, I think it was the week before I told you I was even expecting yes. um, my baby. I, we had a conversation over the phone and you were talking about IVF. That's who... It's An like at such moments, you know, I'm a practical person actually. Even while I was praying, I was saying, come, these people, there are, there are things they call IVF and there are other methods also. It's not only when you have this thing from your own, mm. it can okay. equally come the way God will want it. I said, have you people explored other avenues? And then that day you said, ah, they already gave you a child in Canada. Go and be taken care of. I'm not even knowing that you are already pregnant. <laughs> well, even though I was filled with euphoria in my mind concerning that my grandson there, I said, 
if it One were, minute, guys. <laughs> let me sort out this child. It was like in April, actually. All this while I was praying on. In April, my son, demands, they said, Mommy, I want to take you out. I said, what are you taking me out for? My husband is not at home. No. Because when somebody wants to take me out, say he wants to take the family out, I say, just wait, let your daddy come back. So, one week, two weeks, he was still not coming back. Then he determined, said, I'm taking you out today. Because well, I've been waiting for my brother to announce my pregnancy <laughs> to my mom. When you come back from church, we're going out. <laughs> okay. And so we all went out. That was it. And what were you expecting to see that day? What was I expecting? I was still... It was him I was... I said, ah, this boy, is he coming to tell me he's going to marry somebody? I don't want to hear that kind of news. <laughs> Only me. I want your daddy to be <laughs> there when he's announcing and so that was that was my not it wasn't on your part i wasn't expecting anything from my own house all, from your own side i was thinking that the man that was announcing his marriage to anybody that's why he's taking me out so at the point when they took me out <laughs> In that open because if you've not seen my pregnancy announcement yet, you probably not understand. But when you watch it, you see where my mom oh, yes. got to open a gift from my younger brother. So, during they gave me a pack, I said I must open it, and I opened it. <laughs> I was seeing a baby's, uh, he thought, you know, welcome, or you're going to be a grandmother. I said, What's that? Demanze, did you impregnate anybody or what? <laughs> Who is the girl? Even my daughters that were beside me say, who is the girl? Who, who, they were <laughs> going to lynch Jumanze until this Buddha showed me another video of uh, Gigi and her husband. Hey, I, I just knelt down. I was, hey, I was thanking God. I was praising God. And I was even surprised that my mother was telling me about adoption at the time. When she oh, yes. I was exploring practical ways. I said I'm a practical person, and so it could be by ad adoption. Adoption. Eh? It could be because there are people I spoke to in the past who took that option. Even if you adopt, mm -hmm. your baby can. You don't. God works in mysterious ways, and mm -hmm. so adoption is not the end of the road. It's like looking after. So somebody God has given you because at that moment is whom God has given you. So you look after him. Maybe and in course of that, the Lord Himself will equally add more to you. And there are stories like that to confirm it. It's and what has it been like with you experiencing the grandmother life now that you? Oh, the the, the, the first time I beheld my grandson from the airport. Hallelujah! <laughs> it was. It was like this came out from somewhere. In my it? head, ah, my, this my daughter could produce a seed. Hallelujah! The Lord has made her to produce her own seed. So it's uh, it's been joyous, joyous moments every day of my life. And not only that, the Lord has given me a son, in a son-in-law. So that and she has come to spend the first holiday <laughs> in my house. I got married. Oh, yeah. yeah, like yes. what's your um, advice for people who are going through waiting yes, for anybody journey? who is going through that waiting period. It can be hard. It is a waiting period. And for parents too who are putting pressure on their children, especially from our culture, you know. It is a time, a delicate time actually, for everybody, for the parents and for the people concerned. But the thing is if you get to know that it does not be depend on you all these things does not i've had people who will tell me that their prayer does not work and prayer does not work it's only god that can give you wisdom it can give you counsel that will lead you to directions that will work for you in your specific uh, situation so for anybody going through that moment you don't need to wait until you are expended your energy or your finances 
before you start looking for that situation. Like I said, you can be looking after somebody in your prime. You can be looking after somebody suddenly. Suddenly, that's how it happens. Suddenly, normally suddenly, because we do not dictate to God when or how, where to do it. So the thing is, you could start the process, whichever process you know you choose to adopt. IVF actually is a very expensive thing. All these things are decisions to be taken by the people involved based on their own capacity and situations. But as for waiting, trusting that God will do it, indeed only He can do it. Only he, even only Him can give you that child to adopt that will give you peace. Mm -hmm. Only you can help the doctor to put the, you know, mix the sperm and the egg. Good, into you to produce the child. Mm -hmm. Only God can stand by you and sustain it until it is battered. Anyways, guys, yes, that's uh, basically what today's video is about. This is just me interesting my mom. I'm bringing that here to you guys. Uba has gone back to sleep, just keeping one eye on him, of course. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I will see you next time with another video here on my channel. Until then, take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.